risky business. Former senior advisor to President Obama, David Axelrod, warning Biden could be facing a third party spoiler, specifically from Green Party candidate Cornell West. Axelrod tweeting, quote, in 2016, the Green Party played an outsized role in tipping the election to Donald Trump. Now, with Cornell West as their likely nominee, they could easily do it again. Risky business. This comes as less than 40 percent of Americans say they view Biden or Trump favorably. Almost one in four voters, in fact, say they don't like either candidate, which is a key part of Cornell West pitch. I just thought about all the creative, imaginative, courageous fellow citizens that I meet. And how do we end up with the two candidates? Trump on the one hand, Biden on the other. Good God. With Brother Trump, you've got a, uh, a, a gangster in the objective sense. And with Bro Biden, again, I love the brother, but he's a hypocrite. And he's pushing toward World War III when you talk about the, what, what, what he has to say about China and Russia. Out front now, Joe Pinion, Republican strategist, former Republican candidate for U.S. Senate, and Basil Smeichel. Democratic strategist, former executive director of the New York State Democratic Party. Gentlemen, it's nice to see both of you tonight. You were both sort of nodding your heads as we were playing that sound from Cornell West, which was so interesting. He's been a major figure in progressive politics for some time. So now we see where he's going. This recent NBC News poll really stood out to me. 45% of Democrats say they'd consider backing a third party candidate. Compare that to 34% of Republicans. How concerned do you think Joe Biden should be tonight? He should be a little concerned. And I'll say this because you know, my affinity with uh, uh, to Cornell West, he's my frat brother. I got my PhD in part because I was in, drawn intellectually to the heft of his scholarship. Um, so he resonates, and he has resonated particularly with the African-American community for quite some time, for decades, frankly. So if you're Joe Biden, you know this is likely to be a close race, whether it's DeSantis or Trump, whoever it is, that it's those margins in some states, in a handful of states, where this third-party candidate could be effective, particularly when you look at 2022, you see that numbers, especially in the African-American community, were not where the Democrats needed them to be. So if there is concern about the, how close the general election might be with memories of Jill Stein from 2016, mm -hmm. this is gonna, this should concern uh, uh, Biden and Democrats a little bit based on the issues that Cornell West will be able to address. So a little bit of a concern for Biden and the Democrats. What about for the Republicans? Well, look, I, I think for me personally, if Democrats seem to think that Cornell West is the problem, then they don't seem to recognize why they lost to President Trump in 2016 in the first place. It certainly was not because of Jill Stein. It was because there was a blue-collar revolt from people who felt as if the Democratic Party had left them behind. And so for me, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you see somebody like Cornell West, who politics aside has dedicated his life to justice, the only thing they should have to say to him is thank you. And instead, uh, they send somebody like David Axelrod, the architect of the Obama generation to go out there and take the hats to him, to try to marginalize him, which I think, again, plays into exactly everything he's talking about, that this is a party that is more concerned with the status quo than they are with the safety and security of black and brown communities. And I would also say uh, that we can't forget that this is the same Cornell West that, again, was ostracized because he wanted to support somebody like Bernie Sanders that wanted to push a little further, was ostracized because he wanted to have a black state of the union back with Tavis Smith to talk about what was rightfully owed to a black community that came out in record numbers to help elect the first black president. So again, for me, uh, it just confirms what many believe is that the Democratic Party seemingly uh, has forgotten about what they claim is their core conviction, trying to make sure they can deliver results to multi-generational poverty and despair mm -hmm. uh, for the people that effectively are the bedrock of that party. You know, it's interesting. I was struck today um, the fact that um, Cornell West, who we know, was a major surrogate, obviously, for Bernie Sanders. Yep. So what? was Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who today said she's supporting Joe Biden. Take a listen. I think, um, I think he's done quite well, uh, it, given the limitations that we have. Um, I do think that there are ebbs and flows. Will you be supporting Joe Biden for re-election? Uh, I believe given that field, yes. How significant is it that she is saying that at this stage. Right. right. No, it's incredibly significant um, because in some ways it pulls a lot of her supporters in the direction of Joe Biden and away from thinking that maybe we should be looking at somebody else. Because look, Joe maybe Biden's... Maybe we should be looking at Cornell West. Maybe we should look at Cornell like West. A lot of folks will argue Joe Biden's numbers are soft. Uh, I, I don't think there is necessarily a concern that a lot of voters will go and vote for Cornell West. 
but it may tamp down mm -hmm. uh, turnout uh, because you don't have that sort of movement candidate in a Joe Biden. And okay. to everything you said, it's absolutely right. In terms of communities of color, um, particularly for the black and brown communities, that uh, Cornell West speaks to a lot of those concerns. And Joe Biden needs to take some of that on the campaign trail. So, so to that point that, you, that you're both making, she was then asked about Cornell West, and she referenced that. So I think we have that sound as well. What do you make a Cornell West campaign? You know, I think uh, Dr. West has an incredible history in this country. What he fights for, what he gives voice to is incredibly important. And the ability for us to talk about issues that, frankly, mainstream Democrats are often too afraid to touch. I mean, Joe, that's essentially what you were saying. I mean, and, and you're, I mean, you're both agreeing with each other, right. right? So what is the potential, not just for Cornell West to maybe peel away some of those voters and maybe even beyond people of color, right? We're talking about working class voters, full stop, in this country who are looking for somebody to talk about their issues. Mm -hmm. Could he also pull some away from if it's a Donald Trump as the nominee? Well, look, you see even now with somebody like RFK Jr., who is starting to attract some traction from mm -hmm. some Republican voters. So there is a fervor in America for people who are willing to speak to the populist ambitions of the nation, but also the core bedrock actual deficiencies within our Main Street construct. So, yes, I think if Dr. West was being wise, he'd probably just abandon everything he's doing everywhere and move to Iowa. There's a long tradition of <laughs> grassroots, uh, society, grassroots support, particularly more in the populist and more liberal-leaning bent in those Democratic caucuses. So he should be going to all 99 of those counties and then go back again, then go back again. The South Carolina primary has already been rigged. Uh, certainly, Democrats trying to figure out whether they're going to move it up or leave it where it is. So there's not a lot of oxygen there uh, where, again, they say they know Joe. I think that's where he could have some impact. But I think, to your, to your point, there is a broad consensus from all Americans that we want to have somebody that speaks to the fact that we're spending wars, money on wars abroad. We're not dealing with the fact that we've got public housing in crisis here at home. And if I could just add very quickly, there needs, to, there needs to be a lane, I think AOC was speaking to this, for a Bernie Sanders type candidate. Someone who's going to pull the party and hold Democrats and hold them accountable for a lot of those issues that we haven't necessarily talked about. But if you look at what Bernie Sanders did, look at the impact he's had on how we've talked about college and the college affordability okay. today, how we've talked about health care. There needs to be that voice in this conversation. And if Cornell West is going to play any part in this, that's the voice that, that's the lane that I think he occupies. And to your point about the South Carolina primary, what Joe Biden can do, since that's likely the first primary, is start talking about those issues early, set the tone, and hope that that carries into the general election. But speaking on it once, letting it go, not addressing it again, is a losing proposition. And that's, and that's why I see so many more African-American men, bit by bit, slowly moving to the right, because I think at some point they're willing to consider alternatives mm -hmm. because they feel as if their needs have been neglected for so long. Joe, Basil, great to have you both in the studio tonight. Thank you so much.